How's it going everyone? Vlad here with SolusPLC.com. In today's video, I wanted to do something a little bit different. A lot of you are asking me about showing some examples of code that I would write for a program. And so here what I've got is a scenario where we're trying to pass some data into a MQTT broker, a topic that's going to be slightly outside of the scope of this discussion. However, what I want you to realize is that I needed to create a simulation of a palletizer that's going to feed some hypothetical data into my broker. And this data is going to be passed in the form of dints. So what I'm going to do is walk you through an example of a logic sequence that you should be able to write on your own as soon as you get just the base of PLC programming and just the thought process of how to get this done. So without any further delay, let's get started. So I do have a program called Palletizer under which all logic is going to be hosted. So in Palletizer logic, we're going to start off with rung number zero. We've seen this countless times on this channel. So this is going to be your classic start, stop and enabled rung, which is going to allow me to turn off the palletizer. So if I toggle this stop push button, as you can see, the palletizer is no, wrong, no longer running and it's waiting for that start to come in. If I start it, it's going to resume operation. On my next rung, what I'm trying to simulate is packets coming in. So there's going to be infeed boxes that will need to wait in the queue before they get picked up by the palletizing machine. So what this is doing is when the palletizer is enabled and the stack is not full, which is defined below, it's going to wait for 4,268 milliseconds. And I'll show you how to simulate this in just a second. Now, once this is done, you'll notice that we're going to increment this palletizer D1 register, which is going to count the number of boxes inside of the queue. Once the queue gets to 10, so this is a greater and equals than instruction, the palletizer is going to be deemed full using this bit. And once again, I just want you to look at this logic and see that this is something that you should be able to write once you've learned the base instructions of PLC programming. And this is something that I'm using to create some code that's going to be passing data into my broker. Let's take a quick break and look at the MQTT effects window that has been shown here the entire video and that I, ha I haven't really explained. So what's happening here is that I'm reading the messages that are being received on the broker side. And you'll notice that the variables are changing from 20 to 22 to 24. So it's incrementing the number of packages sitting inside of my palletizer and it's sending that data to the broker. So what's happening in the background, what you cannot see is that this Allen Bradley PLC that's sitting behind me is actually communicating through Ethernet IP to an Opto22 controller and that controller is sending MQTT messages to the broker. And so in this window, we're seeing the different statuses of those messages. As I've shown you, it's incrementing from 20 to 22 to 24 and then there's going to be another register that's going to check on the status of the palletizer and I'll show you that in just a moment. Going back to our code, once the palletizer queue has been filled up, there's going to be a robot. So this could be again in a real scenario, you can have a FANUC arm, an ABB or maybe a KUKA arm that's going to be stacking these pallet boxes on top of a pallet. So once it is enabled, it's going to allow the arm to go and pick up the cases. As you can see here, I'm latching that it has picked up two cases. It is then going to drop off the cases once again, based on a timer. And what I want to show you right now is that you'll notice that the preset for each one of these timers inside of my program is going to be randomized. And the way I've done this is in the simulation program. So if we open the simulation, you'll notice that there's going to be a little bit of interesting logic. So let's scroll all the way up. And so what I'm doing is I'm using the last scan time for my task, which is going to be random every single time to a certain degree, as you can see here. And then I'm also using the wall clock time, which is going to be once again, as I've shown in a previous video, getting us the microseconds of the current time. And if we monitor time zero, so I can right click and then go into monitor time zero. If I scroll down to six, you'll notice that there's going to be a register that stores the microseconds. Going back to the logic, what I'm doing here is once any of the timers is done, so timer zero, timer one, timer two, it's going to multiply the scan time 
by the number of microseconds, thus resulting in a very large random number that's always going to be different. As you can see, changes once one of these is being triggered. And what I'm doing is that I'm moving the number, this random generated number, through a mask to give me a time value from a zero to a certain number that's going to be once again dictated by my mask. In this case, it's mask one, uh, mask one register, and then mask two. So that's how I'm creating a randomly generated value every single time. And you'll notice that here, as an example, this is only going to go up to three seconds in this case it's going to go up to 13 because i want to simulate different processes in my logic going back to the palletizer what's remaining is that it stacks boxes onto a pallet and then once the pallet is complete so what happens is that once we get to 40 boxes on top of a pallet the pallet is considered to be full and once the pallet is full the robot or the cell is going to remove that pallet again through using a random number generated which is going to dictate a different time every single time the pallet is being removed which becomes really interesting because then this data can be used in some kind of a plotting chart again this doesn't have to be ideal to a real world scenario i just wanted to generate a few messages that I can then plot from my broker and as shown on the right hand side once again this is MQTT effects that allows me to see the data coming into my MQTT broker through the Opto22 Groove Epic PLC pulled from this Alan Bradley and let's just quickly look at the logic of the tags that we're pulling so you'll notice that the registers are going to be this pal underscore d0 pal underscore d1 so if I right click and I monitor there's going to be, like I said, zero, one, and two. And these are going to be the registers that will be passed to MQTT effects and ultimately the broker. So that's what we're receiving on this side. You'll notice that this 204 is going to be equivalent to what's going on in this first register. And it's only going to update at certain intervals. Therefore, you're not going to see it update automatically. And we can get into the details of MQTT in a different video. Let me know if you would like to see something like that explained in the comments down below. In any case, that's all I have for you today, and I'll see you next time.